Okay, question number five. This is from magnetism where you need to calculate the magnetic field due to different arrangements. Effectively, the numerical is not difficult, but all you require is a presence of mind because the question would be asking you about the magnetic field at different permutation and combination. Let's see. Two infinitely long straight wires lie in the xy plane along line x equals to plus minus r. So at x equals to plus minus r, there are two infinitely long wires. And plus r carries a current I1, minus r carries a current I2. Apart from that, there is a circular loop of radius r where the center is this one and the plane is parallel to the xy plane and it carries a current i. The loop is carrying current i in the clockwise direction as seen from the above. And one important thing is there, the current in the wire is taken to be positive for the wire if it is in the plus j direction. So these are the situations or the conditions which are given and we need to choose the options. But before that, let's simply try to draw the arrangement because the figure is very, very essential. So here is the situation. This is the circular current carrying loop of radius r and it is parallel to the xy plane and the center is along the z-axis. So that one now comes out to be a very simple calculation, right? So here is the z-axis I mean to say that has to be given there and this is the xy plane all right so this is the given situation and this would be the origin now this is x and this is z so it's very easy to guess right y axis would be in the inward direction the positive y axis because you need to comply with the right hand screw so this is x inside is y so up would be z and at x equals to plus minus r so here is x equals to plus r and here is x equals to minus r and there a current of i1 and i2 has been kept. So there an infinitely long wire partially outside partially inside because that's along y axis. So this is one wire and this is another wire. So these are kept at x equals to plus r and minus r. As I had already said the question is not difficult but it requires a bit of permutation combination. Now the first thing, let's see. The first thing is see, you would find if I1 equals to I2, the current in the straight wires, that's same. B cannot be equal to zero at the origin. So now let's try to claim the correctness of this particular data. So here is the situation. I1 equals to I2. So here is I1 and here is I2, right? And Let's take positive and the positive y direction is inside. So that has to be taken as cross. I better make it by a different color here. So this is cross I1 and this is cross I2, indicating both I1, I2 are in the positive y direction. Now there the current is in this direction. So on the basis of this data, I need to say whether magnetic field at origin is zero or not. So let's calculate. Due to this current, the magnetic field would be up. And due to this, the magnetic field would be down, right? So first of all, due to the current, let's try to find. That's going to be mu naught I1 by 2 pi R K cap is the magnetic field due to this. And I1 is equal to I2. So that's minus mu 1 I1 by 2 pi R K cap is the magnetic field due to this because it goes in the downward direction. What about this? Here the magnetic field would be down. So all you need to do is that you need to calculate the magnetic field due to the ring, which I do not want to do. Magnetic field due to ring and that would again be in a minus k cap direction. And when you do that, the formula is quite simple. Mu naught i a square by 2 a square plus r square 3 by 2. Not a big deal. You would find that the magnetic field cannot be zero. And option number one claims that magnetic field cannot be zero. So here, cannot be equal to zero at the origin, zero, 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 the claim is correct. Now, let's see, option number B, 
if i1 is positive and i2 is negative b can be equal to 0 that means let's see i1 positive and i2 negative so i need to make a change here i1 positive and i2 negative right so here let's make the change there i1 is positive in other word i1 would be there i2 is negative so i2 would be there because positive in the positive y direction now let's see whether this combination can give zero magnetic field or not and that's i think it's possible because due to this the magnetic field would be in this direction due to this the magnetic field would be in this direction and due to this the magnetic field would be in this direction b due to ring and you could see that the directions are opposite so for a given relation between i1 and i2 and i of course the magnetic field can be zero so option number b stands out to be correct now similarly if b is correct then c has to be incorrect because that's simply the opposite of that and option number d let's see if i1 equals to i2 the straight current the z component of the magnetic field at the center of the loop that's a net z component this one is going to be again an interesting one now let's just see what I'll do is say I1 is equal to I2. So here we need to calculate the magnetic field at the center of the loop, right? So let's see I1 equals to I2. So here this is the situation and let me take positive negative hardly matters because that has not been given. So this is I1 equals to I2 and yes this one is always there clockwise as seen from the top. Now, if I calculate the magnetic field, you see due to I1 and I2, because the magnitude of the current is same, the resultant magnetic field due to the straight wire is going to be this. That's a very simple one. And that's going to be in the negative x direction. So, the magnetic field due to ring would be purely along this direction. In other words, Z component of the magnetic field is contributed by the ring and that is mu naught i by 2r in the negative z direction. Therefore, option number d is perfectly fine. So here for this particular question, question number 5 of section A, option number A, option number B, and option number D are the correct one. A, B, D for this question. Right, let's move to question number 6, which is the last question of the first section. All right, let's move.